Hello Travelers, Boardman21 here, and today's video is finally the Poison Umbral Blades build that I've been promising for a while. On this one, you're going to do a ton of damage, it does take a little bit to get it going, and of course you're always going to be squishy, but it is capable of doing 300 plus corruption and tier 4 jewelers, granted that you don't stand in mechanics. You gotta be moving around, you gotta be quick and dodging things that can kill you, and as you can see in the gameplay, you kinda just wipe through everything and do a ton of damage. Now this build is not min-maxed at all. There are a couple of exalted items, there's like one legendary item, but there's a lot more that you can do with it, so I will be putting in a luxury build planner, which is something I would be working towards with this build, and then just what I have here. So it can do much more than it is here, but at the moment it can do 300 plus corruption that's what it's in right now and it can also do all your dungeons for you if you need now it's also more known as a boss killer but it does go through echoes pretty quick as well but again I wouldn't say it's the best arena build but it is great for clearing through echoes really quick and for killing bosses so great for farming all right let's go ahead and get into the skills the interactions and just how it works For skills, I'm running Synchronized Strike, Shift, Acid Flask, Smoke Bomb, and Umbral Blades. For Synchronized Strike, we have this set up to proc 4 shadows all at once, and then they're also going to give you a little bit of life back. The shadows will do a little extra damage, especially with the skills that they use that they're procking when you proc. So we got 1 point in Growing Darkness, 5 points in Foreshadowing for that 200% increased damage. We got one point for Dark Allies. This gives you four shadows instead of two. Four points in Razor Strikes for some Bleed Chance. Three points in Crimson Stored to give you some Crimson Shroud stacks, which is nice for your defense and taking less damage over time. Dynamics for the Mana Efficiency. Three points in Art of the Blade for increased attack speed. And one point in Shadow Rush for gaining 40 health if you use your shadows that are created within four seconds, which you will almost instantly. So it's just another way to regenerate a whole bunch of life to make sure that your life is staying full because you will feel squish and this build is based upon having a lot of dodge and trying not to take a lot of hits and replenishing your health the moment that you do. For shift, we got this set up to proc the acid flask for us. It'll also proc a shadow and give you a ton of dodge for a little bit. We got three points in shadow recuperation, four points in swift recovery, one point in shadow slip, three points in elusive, two points in parting gift, two points in arrival gift, three points in momentum, one point in velocity, and one point in lasting presence for that shadow created after it so that you just have an extra shadow for a little extra damage because when you use umbral blades, it'll just be another source of it being procced. For acid flask, we have... This set up for as much poison chance as possible. We got three points in caustic concoction, four points in contamination, one point in poison pulse, five points in hydrochloric acid, three points in lingering toxicity, four points in amatoxic pulse, and one point in lasting sickness. Acid flask, again, you don't have to manually use when you shift. It'll proc it in two locations, both from where you started and where you end up. And as long as you're standing in it, you're going to have extra poison chance, and it's just going to give you a nice boost of damage. For Smoke Bomb, we have this set up to proc a bunch of shadows for you, give you a bunch of Dust Shroud for survivability, and then do some Armor Shred and Slow. So we got 1 point in Shrouded in Darkness, 4 points in Rapid Concealment, 1 point in Thick Smoke, 3 points in Eroding Fumes, 5 points in Lingering Fumes, 1 point in Generosity for a larger starting area, 1 point in Smoke Blades just to unlock the Umbral Assault, and this gives you 100% Shadow Chance every second, it'll just start making shadows. So against bosses and things, you can throw down a Smoke Bomb, and while you sit there and throw Umbral Blades, every one of those shadows that's created will also throw one for you. It just gives you a nice damage boost along with some more survivability, as well as shreds some of the armor off of the enemy when you use it. For Umbral Blades, we have this set up for as much poison and as many blades being thrown as possible, as well as having them trap in the ground so that when they explode, they apply the poison chance again. So if you throw through the enemy and then that enemy gets hit by the explosion afterwards, they basically get hit twice with all of your poison chance for a single throw, which is really sweet and why it does so much damage. We've got four points in downfall so that there's a dust route chance on use. This also will also give you a lot of survivability. You can get enough stacks of dust route in battle to have a really close to 100% glancing blow, as well as it's going to give you a ton of dodge. Mm -hmm. Four points in Edge of Obscurity, one point in Precision Cuts, one point in Explosive Blades, five points in Cut and Leave, one point in Emerald Cut Less. This is going to convert everything to Poison Chance and all of your bleed from all sources, including anything you have from anything, is going to be converted to Poison, which makes it very useful. So you can put Bleed and Poison Chance on your weapons, and that all becomes Poison Chance. One point in Jagged Carvings, two points in Kanai Belt for the extra blades thrown on your second throw, one point in Twilight Assault so that you can throw 
throw a third time before the blades come back. You also get five blades on that one. These blades can all hit the same target, which makes it absolutely ridiculous because they all explode and those explosions will hit the enemy. And one point in Dusk Hunter so that you get an extra blade on the third throw as well. For passives, we have 46 points in the Rogue Base class with 8 points in Swift Assassin, 3 points in Lethal Cadence, 5 points in Disembowel. Remember that all 5 of these bleed stacks applied on the third attack that you do with a skill are converted to poison because it is a poison chance for you and it's all converted which is going to allow you to do a lot more poison on an enemy. 5 points in dodge and parry, 1 point in twin blade, 1 point in guile, 5 points in evasion, 5 points in agility, 8 points in poison tipped for all that poison chance, 4 points in sapping strikes. This is where you get your mana back with a zero costing skill. Make sure you get at least a tier 1 throwing reduced cost damage on a ring. Only has to be tier 1 and you only need it on one ring, but that's going to allow you to make it a mana generator. And then that last point in thief guard so that every time we do do a glancing blow we do gain a little bit of health back for blade dancer we have 67 points with eight points in cloak of shadows eight points in shroud of dust 10 points in blood serpent's blade six points in sky synthesis five points in flash of steel eight points in weapons of choice eight points in death sword which really makes it nice for that reduced damage when you're low life really keeps you alive between that and endurance six points in a suvance pact one point in argent feel five points in cloaked reaper and two points in shadow master you only need one point here but the extra shadow damage when they use umbral blades because you used it that poison damage is increased by the amount of damage they do so it does help you you can put more points but for the most part one is all you need there if you don't have enough for uniques items idols like I said, there's only one exalted item on this entire build, and that is an exalted poison on hit chance dagger, which is a really great drop. The odds of finding two of these, I haven't found another one yet. For the other hand, we just have the same stuff though, but lower tiers, poison on hit, bleed on hit, you want damage over time, critical strike multiplier. You can also wear, instead of chitin daggers, you can also wear the dagger that comes with critical strike multiplier because that will get turned into effectiveness because of salt the wound but either one of them will work really well then we also have the woven flesh on this with lp would be even better you'd be able to get increased damage while holding a dagger and things like that any special effects or special rare affixes for the rogue character which will really increase your damage you can also get more health which will increase your survivability we do have a Thorn Slinger. This one only had 1 LP and it got increased dodge rating. You can also get hybrid health or increased health, which will really help as well. But for us, the dodge rating is also very useful, especially when you stack dust shrouds. Salt the Wounds, obviously getting LP on this would be really nice because you'd be able to get throwing attack speed, which would really help with your damage. And then a Bleeding Heart where I got minion damage and health. But again, getting Critical Strike Multiplier here, damage over time, poison damage poison penetration, all those things on a bleeding heart would be really good, so aim for those as well. You could also do armor shred on hit if you wanted, as armor shred won't increase the amount that your dots are doing, but it'll increase the amount of damage that you're able to apply with just the hits themselves, which every little bit, of course, does a little bit more damage. For the helm, poison duration and chance per equipped dagger is the main things you want. Getting increased health also helps. And then just make sure on a ring that you have at least a tier 1 throwing attack mana cost so that you can reduce it so that you have a free umbral blades and that's going to allow you to spam it as a mana generator so that you can afford to use synchronic strike over and over again for idols the most important thing to get is the poison chance per equipped dagger now these ones aren't the best ruled and for the suffix they're not the best ones i like the dodge ring of recently hit but there's a lot of other things you can do increase damage while holding a dagger i believe and that's probably going to be your best increased damage one and the best hybrid one that you can get for this slot as for one by ones just cover any resistance that you don't have completely filled out in my case i went with some elemental and some necrotic for the character sheet, as you can see, we've got just about over 1800 health. We are still working on some resistance, just need a little bit more necrotic, a little bit better lightning, and a lot of those are coming from blessings, so I just need to get better rolls, but it is possible to cap out all of the resistance. We got about 14% armor and only 11% dodge, but that's going to go up massively. As you can see, when we get some dust shrouds, as I throw out here, you can see it goes up quite a bit. And then, of course, the armor isn't going to go up much, but... Again, you're not really based on armor, you're based on dodging and glancing blow, which is really helpful. 
And then for offense, you can see we have about 200% poison damage, and that's our increased damage. We got about 400% damage over time. For defense, we have the 100% critical strike avoidance thanks to the woven flesh. We don't have cap down endurance yet. We're aiming for that blessing to cap that out. And then for our other, for our poison chance, we have 824% chance to poison, which is huge, but you can get it well over 1,000% with some better rolled idols, some better weapons, and those things will put you over 1,000% chance, and that's when you're going to really get towards min-maxing the amount of damage that you can do with the build. And then for how to play the build, all you have to do is throw the Umbral Blades through it and then watch them explode and the damage will start to take off. Now, Synchronized Strike is going to be a big damage boost. Having four Shadow Stone all at once is a ton of extra stacks. You can already see the training dummy's life is going down. We're doing about two to three million damage right now. But if you throw in some Synchronized Strikes, you throw in your Smoke Bomb, you get in an Acid Flask, it starts getting even more ridiculous. You can see we're jumping up to almost five million damage ticks here and there. There's a six million, seven million, nine million damage. You can see the training dummy's health is just absolutely absolutely going. You can do a lot of damage with this build and again it's not min maxed. There are a lot more things you could do for it to make it not only tougher but still do even more damage. As for leveling this build, leveling up with Flurry or with Umbral Blades, they both work really well. You can do either of them. Again, it's going to feel really squishy until you get all of your resistance capped, until you probably put on a woven flesh for the critical strike avoidance and you might even want to wear a shield for leveling up. But it comes together quite well and you can level it from level 1 all the way up. You don't have to transition to this build, but again, I like leveling with Flurry. Flurry and Force Wave just feels better, and you can wear a lot of all the same gear because you're doing Poison Chance, and then just swap skills later if you want. All right, that's going to be it for this build guide. Hope you enjoyed it, and as always, stay safe and enjoy some gameplay.